What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Woe24, and as you know, I bring the hottest reaction to the flow, and if you don't know, then you need to know. Today, I got a few videos that I want y'all to see, because if you ask me, the world is coming to the end, and it ain't even if you ask me. It's if you ask a lot of people. It's a lot of crazy stuff going on, and I got four videos right here that basically proves that. This stuff is wild. Everybody needs to stay prayed up, stay out this heat, stay out of trouble, and stay humble. But without further ado, I'm going to get you into the video. But if you don't know, now you know. Check it out, though. If you haven't liked, comment, and subscribe, make sure you do that right now. It's something real quick, and it's free. So go ahead, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I post. But let's get into it. I'm leaning like a fucking sad. Mixing my feet, yeah, you know I just bought them. Ho, come through after when I when I say sorry, though. No. Only concern is to make sure my gun is low. I love my body, but. A witness says six year old Kingsley White and her parents were shot by a neighbor in Gastonia, North Carolina, when some of the kids went to retrieve a basketball that had rolled into his yard. So, you mean to tell me, already hopping in, somebody shot somebody over a basketball rolling in their yard? I couldn't get in inside in time, so he just so he shot my daddy in the back. Don't tell me he shot that girl in the face. I was wondering why her cheek looked like that. No way. Don't tell me he did that. That does look like a gunshot wound. And uh, and I think the bullet came back and it hit me and the bullet went in in my cheek. Oh my boy, no child should ever tell that story. In my cheek. That's uh Oh my but you see, goodness. little Kingsley has stitches on her cheeks. Kingsley's father is still in the hospital this morning. 24-year-old Robert Singletary was later arrested and charged with attempted murder. A 13-year-old boy in your county. Why, why, wasn't I, why wasn't I surprised that a brother did that? Man, we gotta do better. Brothers, put the firearms down. Just because you have one of these don't mean you gotta squeeze. Y'all, yeah. we gotta do better. I know it's summer, but... We cannot go out like this. Let's get to the next example. Accused of shooting and killing his 12-year-old classmate back in April is heading to trial. Fox 43's Harley joins us live from the York County Courthouse where a witness testified about the shooting incident today during a preliminary hearing. Well, Nolan Grove has been charged with third-degree murder and involuntary manslaughter for allegedly shooting his friend, Kane Highland, in the back. Now they Did they say a 13-year-old shot a 12-year-old? How did a 13-year-old get a firearm? This is this is terrible. Hearing today only needed to show enough probable cause to move to a full trial. But we did hear for the first time from a witness, the other teenage boy who was with them that day. The witness testified that he, Highland and Grove, spent the afternoon together on April 1st, at times playing with a handgun taken from Grove's father's house. That evening, the witness said, Grove said something about Highland's mother, and Highland told him to be quiet. According to the witness, Grove responded, responded, quote, you know what will happen, then shot Highland at close range. Court documents say neither boy called 911, and Grove asked the witness not to tell anyone what happened. A Pennsylvania state trooper involved in the case also testified on Monday. Grove did not testify and remained silent through the hearing. So you mean to tell me he told somebody you know what will happen, the person basically laughed it off, and he shot him? And killed him? This is, this is, I, I, sometimes I don't know if the news is telling the truth. Some of this stuff is just so outrageously strange. And to the parents, I know you want to have your firearms readily available, but you guys have to lock these things up, especially when you're not at the house. Even when you're at the house, if it's not on your person, have it locked up for certain. Come on, man. 
Now, Grove remains at a juvenile behavioral treatment facility in Allentown. He is being charged as an adult, however, and faces up to 40 years in prison if convicted. His next hearing is scheduled for next month. Live in York, Harry Lee, Fox 43 News. That's crazy. And he should get all 40 years. See, these young kids, they go and they do these crimes when they're young because they believe that they're going to get out when they're 18 years old. I think that law should be abolished. I think that they should serve the full sentence because at some point they do realize what they're doing. At this point in this day and age, they know what they're doing. These kids are so advanced. There's a six-year-old that knows how to hack into YouTube, like the whole YouTube server and get a million views just by hacking into YouTube or something like that. Or, or it's it's... It's crazy nowadays. These kids, they're very, very advanced. They're very smart. So there is no, there's no excuse for why they shouldn't be trialed as an adult because, yes, they can process that a person that passes away does not come back. And this right here, uh, Tanner Watkins shooting. Isaiah Fitzgerald killed, oh, killed or murdered do, do argument on Facebook. It, due to argument on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> People, that's why I don't be on Facebook. So, backstory. Um, the dude that you seen on the right-hand side with the long hair, he posted a picture of his girlfriend. A light-skinned African-American male made a laughing emoji and these are the text messages that came of that Tanner Watkins which is the man that posted the photo of him and his girlfriend the African American male sent a laughing emoji he said what's funny I'm trying to get some bread huh and then shit I don't know you the one you the one on my dock which we know what the other word is but it, it makes sense. <laughs> and then this one right here says, nah, you always on some funny-ish. The fuck you gon' the fuck you going react to my stuff for anyway. And then he said, I'm ready though, with the in the target. So Elijah responds back and says, I seen Alyssa on it, why wouldn't I? So basically that was like a little that was like a little low blow. He said, "The f that got to do what the f that got to do with me? You feel some type of way? That's my shawty, and it's smoke behind her too. You got me confused with one of these other n words. Watch and see." Elijah responds and says, "My bad. I didn't know I was messing with the wrong wigger because the man he's talking to is a is a Caucasian male." And we know white men that try to act African American or try to act black, they call it wiggers. So yeah, it's just some small stupid Facebook argument, but it leads to something more. So further text say, y'all drop the low. We gonna slide later. Mut was asleep. Tanner says. Okay, say less. So he says, let me know when y'all, when, when you up, I'll drop a spot. Yeah, you ain't got no wheels or something. And then Fitzgerald responds back by saying, my, in the shop getting fixed. I got wheels, like I said, my F is asleep. So when my F is woke up, whoever my F is, is woke up. He told them about the situation, or he went and woke them up about the situation, and they was basically getting ready for a fight at the park and meet up to fight at a park over some so-called words on Facebook. But this did not end in a fight. And the golf players quickly called for authorities, and they arrived at the scene within minutes. Saudis and Sykeson say what started out as an argument on social media turned into a deadly encounter at a city park. 
Good evening, everyone. Two people now face multiple charges in connection with that shooting. 18-year-old Caleb mm. Ramsey and 20-year-old Tanner Watkins are charged with first-degree murder, wow. armed criminal action, and multiple counts of assault. The two okay, so see the dude in the long hair with the long hair? He's the one that posted the picture of his shawty. And I guess his homeboy right here is 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 went with him to go put in said work so that's how that happened who are accused in the shooting at rotary park that left an 18 year old dead and another seriously wounded nikki clark mm. is live in the studio with more details jeff police say the fight started on facebook and ended in the shootout at rotary park i spoke with the chief of sykeston's department of public safety who tells me investigators have been hard at work to piece it all together and let me tell y'all gentlemen some stop fighting over women stop shooting over women stop posting your chick if you don't want people to say things about it you don't have to put your girl on your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Snapchat, your TikTok. You don't have to put your girlfriend on any of those things. Some things are a best kept secret. So I, I, I just, uh, for the love of me, I would believe that these type of things should be skewed. We're out here today, combing the scene again, trying to see if we can find any trace evidence, shell casings, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Authorities in Sykeston spent Wednesday morning looking for clues after a deadly shooting Tuesday afternoon. They were communicating through social media, and it looked like that they were trying to meet up at a location to have a fight. Sykeston DPS Chief Jim McMillan says the location they picked, Rotary Park. To have a fight? We know ain't nobody fighting nowadays. Come on, man. One party was already here, about four people in a vehicle. Um, two other vehicles arrived with about five other people in those two vehicles. The first vehicle parked in this lot. McMillan says you can still see the tire tracks from where the second vehicle pulled up. Then, he says, shots were fired from both vehicles. We had uh, a couple different rifles that were used in this and a few pistols that were used as well. Chief McMillan tells me it didn't take long for witnesses to call 911. Several people in the area heard the gunfire going off. This golf course is right next to the park, separated only by a small fence. I spoke with one man who witnessed it. He didn't want to go on camera, but says everyone on the green hit the ground as soon as the gunfire started. That allowed police to quickly find the suspects. Vehicles leaving, they got those vehicles stopped, uh, addressed the people inside. There were some that were injured and, and struck by gunfire. The chief says this park is not known to be a problem area. It's unusual to have um, a type of incident like this in this location. Uh, so obviously people are very concerned. Investigators say they're not identifying either of the victims out of respect for the families. Chief McMillan is asking wow. anyone with information about the shooting to come forward. In the studio, Nikki Clark, Heartland News. That is crazy. Put your firearm in your car and scrap it out like men if that's what two are gonna do. But they had no intention on scrapping out anything they got to it and somebody was losing oh me that is crazy we've searched the property and we've located uh seven bodies what seven bodies Oklahoma law enforcement found those bodies in Henrietta Monday, but would not discuss any additional facts of the case. There's no suspect at large that we are looking for right at this moment. While neither a motive nor the name of a suspect has been released, the father of 16-year-old Brittany Brewer confirmed his daughter was among the dead. She always played with her little sister, and uh, and I don't know how I'm going to tell her, because she's like, Brittany's love, Brittany's missing, Brittany's missing. And i got to tell a four-year-old that she's gone. Did you even report your daughter missing? 
Because you dang sure didn't say our reported are missing. And now I'm finding this out. You didn't say nothing about if you ever reported are missing. I ain't trying to be uh, a judgment passer or pass judgment on anybody. But his body language kind of suspicious. He don't, He look like he have a dry cry going on. He don't look like he really sad. Something tells me he's going to be a prime suspect in his own daughter's murder as well as those seven people. People understand, fathers do things to their child, and their child gets ready to tell, and the father cannot have that happen. And I'm not saying if that's the case, but his body language and the way his eyes are moving frantically, and he seems like he's nervous while giving this this here statement. And I don't know how to do that. Earlier in the day, Oklahoma Highway Patrol reported Brewer was endangered and missing, along with her friend, 14-year-old Ivy Webster. They were believed to be traveling with 39-year-old Jesse McFadden. Oh. I'm leaning like a... Well, it tells me, yeah, now they, they know who it is. Hold on, they just said they didn't release any suspects, but then they just said his name at the end. Oh, they trying to lie to us. But, man, it's your boy, Woe24. Let me know what you think of that, man. That's some crazy stuff. But I ain't even finna hold y'all up. I'm kind of tired. I'm finna take myself to sleep. But as you know, it's your boy, Woe24. And, man, niggas know they getting scared. Mason my feet, yeah, you know I just bought them. Hope come through after when I when I say sorry, though. Only concern is to make sure my diamonds goes all love my body. But your skinny though.